Welcome to Tasty Jams, a video podcast for rock and metal musicians, where each week we feature new bands to showcase their music and hear their stories so that you can get you and your band out of the garage and onto the main stage. All right, so how are you guys doing? Amazing. Good, man. How are you doing? Uh, doing great. What do you think of the studio so far? It's awesome. Pretty dude. cool. It yeah, blew we all of our minds. Amazing. Awesome. Yeah, we've never seen anything like this in our area. Awesome. Cool deal. Oh, it already blew my mind. <clears throat> Hell yeah. So, um, yeah, thanks uh, to anybody who's not familiar with what Tasty Jams is now. Um, we're officially making a podcast and a video show. Um, Tasty Jams is basically going to be interviewing new bands every week. And uh, they're going to tell us a little bit about their stories of what their um, what their experiences are like, and anything they can give to, um, I guess, really help motivate people or teach people how to get your band really out of the garage and onto the main stage. That is the whole goal of this show. We're going to be talking everything from instruments, the gear that they use, um, some of their influences. We're going to get to listen to some of their track later on and uh, we have a music video to show you and make sure to stick around for the very end of it because uh, we have a an acoustic set so this will definitely be pretty awesome I can't wait to hear it for sure so um, if you want to introduce yourselves I'm Stefan I play drums in the band Big Mister I'm Tyler I play or I do vocals I'm Jamin and I sing and play guitar and then we've got Jacob who plays guitar but he's not here with us yeah, right can now. make it okay yeah. cool deal so Big Mister How'd you get the name? That's, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's your story. <laughs> it started, it was like kind of a joke. Um, they were in a band before this, and it started kind of like, I guess, what would Fizz, you call, would you call it a side project? Yeah, yeah. It was it was a side project, per se. And um, we, me and him, we worked together. And Where'd you work? At, at a gas station yeah. <laughs> to beat it all. Um, but anyways, we worked together. He quit his job, but we still hung out and shit. And one day we were hanging out. We were like recording pre-pros and whatnot. Like I, I had solo stuff before this, and they were in a band before this. Yeah. And then like me and him decided to link up and like work on something. So we wanted to like put a name to it. We didn't know what to name it. And one day we were all hanging out, and then his brother was it your brother who? What we got? It was Josh, wasn't it? He that was came in. Yeah. That came into, or was it you? Yeah, it was me. It was you. Yeah. That came into the room and was like, he, he saw me because we hadn't hung out in a couple of days. He was like, what's up, big mister? Okay, and I was like, you. dude, that's the <laughs> fucking name right there. <laughs> cool. That's dude. it. Move the microphone there. Cool deal. So. That's that's actually really cool, man. That's, that, that's how that's it came bomb, to be. So, that's uh, how the name came to be. So uh, I guess uh, really since this is the first episode, I should introduce myself. My name is Jacob Hart. Um been playing guitar for a long time and i'm a huge i have a huge passion for <clears throat> rock and metal music i really do like uh, everything i do in my life revolves around either metal guitars metal shows i'm a big fan of uh, glenn fricker from specter uh specter media group his channel is fucking amazing and it's taught me a lot of stuff and really what he does is give a lot of information that the people don't know to ask really you yeah. know because uh every show that you see when they interview any metal or rock bands they always asking the same generic questions yeah, you know exactly. where are you from how how did you get together stuff like that do you have any touring plans uh now we're actually going to talk a little bit more in depth to what it's like being in a band um, awesome yeah so awesome. uh before we get started here i have a couple of questions prepared here because uh really this is stuff that was brought to me and uh, asked me a lot of people that was getting started so. so let's go back to when you first started playing when did you know that you really wanted to be in a band well um for me and him it's pretty much been as long as we can remember we've just we've been yeah since we were kids we've yeah. like play with guitars and like make pillow drum sets yeah. and like <laughs> frying pans all yeah. that stuff and then finally like we had a trash can one time yeah so. yeah <laughs> <laughs> once we were old enough to like actually you know all be able to play in unison and in time basically was when we started like we were like 12 when we started playing shows yeah. and i knew then that like mm -hmm. that's definitely what i wanted to do for sure so um so for the beginners out there that's really maybe you're a teenager maybe you're in high school if you're listening to this um you know metal and rock making a, a living in metal and rock music is very unrealistic so that's why yeah. a lot of people are really just 
you got to be crazy to go for that career. And I know you're seeing it on TV. And, you know, if you turn on, like, old MTV or VH1, you see all these famous rock stars and loaded and money going out. Yeah. yeah that's it's not, like not that realistic anymore. at all. Yeah, um, yeah. Really, in this profession, you need and require one thing, and that's passion more than anything else. You know? yeah. And if you, if you don't have that um, intrinsic motivation in you to – to really uh, pursue forward into it, you are not going to make it. You're probably not even going to get to the stage, yeah, exactly. let alone yeah, keep it up. And uh, you got to be willing to like put everything in your life on hold it, if you want to be in a band. It's literal like, yeah. blood, sweat, and tears. Yeah, man. like your like, job, your family, your your gal. Yeah. That your goes into like the next question I had. It says, "How do you go about forming a band for beginners?" Like, so you know you want to be in a band. Now, how do you go about doing it? I think the it's, best way, like, yeah, you take it. It's it's really kind of hard but you just kind of have to message as many people with social media being as yeah. huge as it is now you it just really have to contact as many people as you can and that goes for not only starting a band but anything just making contacts with people finding connections yep. yeah. building relationships with people inside of your local scene really helps too yeah personal like, as well as social media like yeah, you got to yeah. go in person and yeah. you got go to meet shows. people talk to people yeah, go yeah. to shows definitely i got lucky i met him and then through him i met him and I mean, I work a full time job on top of being in okay. a band, forty hours a week. Yeah, it was me. I was working full time. I mean, and doing it, college it sucks, at the same man. Time. But yeah. the thing yeah. is, is my job like they they hook me up and they give me the days off that I need and whatnot. That's awesome. And so a they flex, flexible schedule is definitely yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. a, definitely. a requirement mm-hmm. for oh, yeah. if you want to be in a band. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. There's no, down, man. You're not really going to get a great job where you're working 12, 16 oh, hour no. shifts somewhere, or yeah. like a yeah. doctor or anything like that. Yeah, man. You you have to have days off. You do for sure. Very good. So, um, what do you expect from your band members when you're looking for another band, or if you're a band and you got somebody wanting to join a band? Because that's what most people do. Is uh, what do you look for in that band member? dedication yeah commitment like you've like i said you've got to be able to you know drop anything at any time mm-hmm. for the band it's, it's really two things it's having a passion for your craft like your music that you make your instrument it's that and then it's also being able to actually commit like jamin said yeah like and you've, drop you've got to be there every practice be there for every show and like you know what i mean like yeah mm-hmm. i have a big time with um bandmates being like late like yeah. hours late That's and then not, especially yeah. when your practice is only like let's say a couple hours you know yeah that you ruins an hour practice, well at the end of the day well. i know the old age saying is you know actions speak louder than words i mean Absolutely. whenever you're looking for a bandmate like if they're there on time and they they seem like they want to be a part of it that speaks louder <clears> than anything they can right. do yeah if everything comes together correctly you'll just know whether or not yeah. they're meant to be awesome that's one of my biggest pet peeves is people being hours late <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. understandable <laughs> i say that because one of my one yeah. of my friends is late for a lot of stuff and i give her hell all the time it's okay my co-workers are too so <laughs> <laughs> no, besides here i work at a vape shop oh. back in uh, bristol tennessee so i already know somebody listening to this right now is going to point out our southern accents just so they know um we are from bristol tennessee so if you don't know where that's at look up the bristol motor speedway and you will see uh, pretty Beautiful much a Bristol. hick town. Um, if it's not bluegrass or country, they pretty much don't give a fuck around here. <laughs> yeah, um, we're all southern as hell. Yeah, yep. <laughs> and uh, you know nothing against bluegrass and country. I'm sure that's cool with people. <clears throat> fuck country. <clears throat> anyway, uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> so, but um, yeah. So it's really hard to get gigs uh, if you're in a small town. Like yeah. certain small towns that are just you know kind of setting their folklore, yeah. and their own little um, communities. They don't really. It's definitely hard Catered to get a, like a crowd out shows here, you know, because mm-hmm. people are usually wanting to see country and bluegrass. So mm-hmm. yeah. you got to really work hard to get tickets sold and get that draw that you want to have a good show. Yeah. You know what I mean? The, so right, the, the funny thing is uh, whenever we first started playing like actual paid gigs and stuff was when we were in the band To Your Dismay, our old band, and we were a metal band. You know, we were heavier and we just kind of got thrown into everything. And at that time, the metal scene was a lot more vibrant and there was a lot more people coming out to shows and things like that. But yeah, I was, um, uh, I was in the metal scene in a band called plague Warren back in, uh, well, I think 2010, I would say. And, um, 
Yeah, we uh, we would draw crowds sometimes, yeah. uh, upwards to a couple hundred people. It was really cool. But then sometimes it's just you, your bands, and the girlfriends. Five, I mean, yeah, like five people. And maybe the bartender's <laughs> friend. Yeah. Um, that was about it, you know? But, yeah. But uh, a lot of people think that those are just wasted shows, and they're really not, you know? Because every show is a practice. Yeah, I mean, exactly. There's yeah, no yeah, better practice down. than the, being yeah. at a show. That's true and shit. that's how you really get better. I mean, everything from... You know, bad cables, bad equipment, mm -hmm. uh, tuning yeah. your guitar before you get on stage, warm ups. Using um, your clicks, you can little practice stuff with like your that. click tracks. Yes, yeah. Definitely. Anybody listen to this, uh, practice with a click track. Yeah. It'll be the best thing you'll ever do in your life. Yeah. Um, I played for many years without it, and I tried learning to play with it in the studio, and I just. Yeah, it completely, it completely just screwed me <laughs> yeah. up. And then that's. <laughs> My uh, best friend, uh, I'll go and shout out to him, Matt Wooten. He was the other guitarist in Plague Warren, and he kicked my ass in that studio. <laughs> yeah. So it was at the point where I was like, you know what? I'm just since you played tight, I'm gonna let you record all the riffs. So <laughs> I did. I mean, he played so tight. It was yeah. it was ridiculous. Cause um, if you know anything about studio recordings, there's you have to play it exactly right. Oh yeah. Oh perfect. Yeah. Four times and four layers, and that will sometimes take you doing the riff thousands of times before yep. you get it. Oh yeah. And um. A lot of people think studio recordings done in a couple hours or <laughs> a day. Shit. Usually, yeah. Yeah. it's a lot. Yeah. From what my experience, it was about a week long for a song. I mean, full and mastered. Huge appreciation for music engineers and producers who have to sit there and capture it. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. If you guys ever check out that Glenn Fricker show, um, Spectre Media Group or Spectre Sound Studios, he is he is the bon he is the man. He will tell it exactly like it is. And That's awesome. His show is really killer. I've been following his show for a while, and actually, I get most of my tips from. From his show and he's taught me a lot and then it kind of encouraged me to pursue a lot of audio engineering so i got to learn a lot about sound and dynamics yeah. um eq compressors mm -hmm. uh lots of different stuff that most yeah. people have no idea what you're talking about yeah. um yeah. everything from what is it uh power conditioners inside your rack i mean yeah that stuff makes a big difference oh yeah especially in the stage so um do you have any tips that you would give a band for writing music how what's a good proper way to write that's not just wasting your time I Writing, I would say get a good little studio program and get yourself an interface and start okay. recording yourself. Kind of like by an yourself. Audio yeah. Box mobile yeah, for yeah, you yeah. Yep. Scarlet 2i2 or something. Oh, yeah, because yeah, yeah. that's what we started to do. And I, I found that like recording your own music, you just get crazy ideas and like the possibilities are endless. Yeah, the, the, the best or the, the, the main thing you need is inspiration, and inspiration can be really hard to find. Yeah. And if you have a DAW that you can work on, a workstation that you can put your ideas out onto paper, so to speak, then yeah. it's a lot easier to have that inspiration. Formulate ideas and yeah. such. So I've heard a lot of people writing music that way. I've heard of some of the bigger bands I um, listen to, uh, Kill Switch Engage. Yeah. Um, when they form a lot of their ideas, they'll record it themselves and yeah, send it to each other. It. And yeah, yeah. They, they end up forming songs that way. That's literally yeah, that's, what we yeah, do. Yeah, that's what we do. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Like with Basically. Adam D uh, as the like producer, man. He these two guys shit. will write a song, an amazing song, and I'll be at work, and I'll I'll get it in an email. And then from there, I start writing lyrics. And then awesome. we all meet up, and from there, we just – it's like building blocks. Like then Legos, we go to Matt man. Smile. We just build and build. And it took us a minute. Matt Smile, shout out to Matt. He's our love producer. Buddy. We love yeah. you, Matt. Yeah. He's our boy. <laughs> He's pretty cool. Um, we yeah. have actually got the uh, – should be – hopefully have those guys on the show here pretty soon. Awesome. Yeah. And uh, Armed the Witness and Bound by the Crown. And uh, we've yeah. got quite, love every quite single one of those, those we bands. got quite a few people that's uh, interested in being here. And I was love really happy. Uh, I sent out a post on Facebook just kind of kicking around the idea because I really wanted to do some kind of a video podcast or something oh, yeah. or a show, really. And um, – yeah, man, uh, my Facebook blew up all day long. That's There's awesome, people dude. People tagging everybody and tagging this Saw person. That post. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was, yeah I, was, I couldn't remember how much it was, but I was like, wow, we should really do this. and uh, yeah. Capitalize on so, that, man. You got Welcome it. to yeah. Tasty Jams. <laughs> we Tasty love it here. So, yeah, Tasty awesome. Jams, Tasty obviously, Jams. it's yeah. just Tenacious D reference. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. I love Tenacious D. Yeah, dude, Tenacious D is yeah. awesome. You wrote a Tasty Jam and all the planets did a line. So. <laughs> hey, when you get the buds here, they'll play you some Tenacious D too. Really? On yeah. Oh, yeah. Awesome. They'll, they'll, they'll play, play the shit. That, uh, yeah, they fucking kill it. They That's fucking awesome. Kill. They can play tribute. <laughs> I can't wait to see that. That's going to be killer. Yeah. So, um, so some people feel that they're held back from not having expensive gear. What do you say? Not at that? all. That's that's a complete bias. Like you're yeah. holding yourself back at that point. Mm -hmm. Like, like I, gear has nothing to do with anything. Like if you have the if motivation, you know how to use it, you can get a good time. Exactly. Out of it. Yeah. If you know how to use it and you know what you're doing, 
gear has nothing to do with it. I would say a good platform as far as like recording, like if you're recording demos or pre-pros, like anything, like dude, whenever I was starting before I knew these guys, I used uh, Audacity. Yeah, free program. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. free. free program. It's yeah, completely funny, free, yeah. man, and I used it. So, I mean, that being said, like it's all about like just utilizing freebies. Yeah. yeah, I mean, at the end of the use day, use what you've got and really learn how Coming to use from it. A and then I met these budget, guys, and like they, they were already like a step ahead of me. They were using like you know, personas and yeah, yeah, Studio One, Studio yeah, One Studio and, One yeah, and I, shit. And like, I, I uh, messed around with Sony Avid, uh, no, Sony Acid Pro. I'm sorry, I've and, never uh, used that. That was old school. This was, yeah, uh, <laughs> I think this is back in like 2004. I think I was using it, but um, <laughs> yeah, I got a hold of that program, and I, I think I, I remember uh, spending about probably 20 something hours before i even got the hang of how yeah to just how to run as a teenager i'm like i gotta figure this out man. yeah, I'm gonna, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna make my best album in the world yeah so, yeah i did that and uh, i started recording them on like burnt cds just a little burnt cds and i was handing my um demos out to my friends and stuff like that just here listen to it send me what you think i got my yeah. guitar skills bro you know like, <laughs> yeah <laughs> no nah, it wasn't yeah. wasn't quite that bad but it was it was pretty cool but i mean whenever you limit yourself and you're like I don't know, like, whenever you're saying that you can't do something. Making excuses for yourself. Yeah, making excuses for yeah, yourself. Excuses like one thing I absolutely hate. Yeah, and I we've all done it. it. Everybody's done it. Mm-hmm. Like, I have too. Everybody has. Like, don't limit yourself. That's yeah, that's the main key to it. I think it's one of the it. things I've neglected the guitar um, for a long time is I, I don't actually play every day anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And my friend, Matt, he plays it every day. I mean, every day. So he's getting, like way better yeah. than me. he's a tight ass player and um so i i kept telling him i said man i, I just i don't know I, I gotta have a reason to pick up the guitar like mm-hmm. i can't be just jamming to be jamming you know um i was like man i mean i'm not in a band i'm not even looking to be in a band because i've got at this point in my life right now i got a little too much going on with college and working full time and and then filming um i run a film production company um well, i don't run it i help run it with a few of my other close friends um dark star films with uh chelsea lambert and we've been kicking some ass at that and um yeah the more we do the more music videos we're gonna film and yeah. get better at that so i'm pursuing a lot of other stuff at the moment but guaranteed oh it's coming soon i'll be back on that stage that's awesome i love it because once you get the bug for playing you never you never, yeah, oh, dude, yeah. it's, you, never you don't lose it man it, it literally lots of fire under your ass you feel like you're yeah. a super saiyan when you're on stage sometimes yeah, yeah. literally it's like yeah. every single time i, mean, <laughs> I used to love it when i chug those guitar strings on stage and it kick you right in the chest cause yeah it's just so yeah dude so loud um the people volume. beating the fuck out of each other yeah, and shit it's, yeah. <laughs> it's it. the best feeling yeah, on dude. the planet man <laughs> it's awesome As, yeah. and especially like you know you you work so hard and you write these songs and then you see people like you know getting into it and singing along to it mm. like Nothing compares to that. Oh, yeah. It's definitely um, one of the best adrenaline rushes I've ever had in my life. Yeah, dude. And, uh, for sure. I did a little bit of MMA and stuff like that. But, yeah. uh, like, being on stage with that power through you. Mm-hmm. The, just the a power rush. Of that music just right through your yeah. veins, man. It's like something about the tone of that electric guitar to me just and that makes kick. you feel invincible, man. Yeah. You know? um, hate you feel breed. it in your chest. Hate Breed says it. Uh, Jamie Josta would say it a lot on his shows that, you know, I hope, I hope our music tonight makes you feel invincible. And damn right man Never yeah dude i couldn't that. say it better yeah. myself <laughs> yeah. yeah it's awesome so um really uh so you guys uh just now got your first recording right yeah the ep mm-hmm. yeah. okay and uh tell us a little bit how that process how'd y'all go going into the studio we went uh we recorded it at the buds hq studio engineered and produced by matt smile and where's that at it's in uh bristol tennessee bristol tennessee cool yeah yep. it's it's right by the the speedway uh Obviously, he did an amazing job. It's our self-titled EP. And we recorded that, like, last summer. Okay. And took about a year to get it all mixed and mastered because Chris Crummett, who's done, like, Issues and Dance Gavin Dance, mastered it. Okay. Real friends. That, he just did. Yeah, he just did yeah, real he friends. Did real too. friends too. Yeah. And, uh, February was that one of the tracks off that one. Yeah, that's yep, our first was. single that we released. So, off uh, of it. I want to let you guys check out the music video to this, um, so you can kind of hear what the, some of the music's like, and uh, we will be right back. i 
So yeah, I hope you liked the video. Leave it in the comments what you think about the music video in the comments below. We want to hear your feedback for sure. Um, let us know what you think of these guys. And if you can, get out to a local show around here in the Tri-Cities and get out and see them. So um, back to our discussion. Uh, let's see. What challenges really will you face when trying to start a band? Like getting a place to practice was always a big challenge for me. Uh, especially in neighborhoods, you know, you see it on yeah. TVs. They're jamming in the garage and stuff. The that, that that shit does not <laughs> fly around yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've had the cops called on me many times. Yeah. Uh, I've been called Satan worshippers. I've been called yeah. um, demons. Uh, they heard uh, the voices of the devil coming from my garage. <laughs> I've heard it, I've heard it all when it comes to that. So, really, what was your experiences like? How like how did you find a place to practice? We've all. We've always been pretty fortunate yeah, to have we're, his We're pretty his lucky. House. Yeah, we're lucky. Yeah, we're, 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 yeah. yeah. we're fortunate yeah. for him. Okay. Yeah, yeah we're usually lucky. the drummer has the, yeah. the place to practice because yeah. of that. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> and if um if you're a parent listening to this podcast, you know, really think about what your kids are doing. Um, when you got a teenager that's into music and he's got a band and he's wanting to practice, you know, be supportive of that because they could yep. be out doing drugs. They could be out doing yeah. ten million times worse things. You know, don't do drugs. I mean, look at where Instead we're at, man. We're in, we're in East Tennessee, man. The op the opioid epidemic is insane. Oh, yeah. yeah, dude, dude it's insane. People are doing heroin. Shit. People are doing suboxone. People yeah. are doing anything. Yeah, I think they can most get their of the time on. when um, 
you know, I mean, it's kind of coming a little off topic on the drugs, drug subject, but music was a way for me to really express myself and be motivated to, like, do stuff. Yeah. yeah. yeah and I man, think a I mean, lot of times when it comes to drugs, it's because they're bored as shit. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You know, I mean, at the end of the really day, is. people get bored, and idle hands are the devil's plaything, man, at the yep. end of the day. Yeah. Like, if you're bored, man, like, and you don't have an outlet that for it. That's a good one. You're going to literally strive for whatever you can do. And people get bored, and they they literally go for what their friends are doing, man. Oh, yeah. And it's it's sad, man. Like, we live in an area to where kids, there are so, there's so much talent and, here. Yeah. Like, I went to school with so many people that could have went to college and played ball or could have done this or done that. And, like, instead, they got hooked on dope. Yeah. yeah. And it's sad, man. It, it's, it's genuinely sad. And... Yeah, like, like luckily I got lucky and I mean I, I did I had good parents and they, they were strict as fuck like they were strict bro I mean I, I went to my Bible camps my whole <laughs> same life here, dude. Same same here. Here. and I mean I was the kid like look at me now I got like devil tats on me and shit but I mean <laughs> yeah. like people think we're satanic oh of course they do like but that. they don't understand the big picture even, yeah like but like real satanic is not even anything to do with <laughs> satanic is just yeah. like Aesthetic atheism. Mm, exactly. Right. It's, yeah, <laughs> but, a- atheism. But that, nobody that would understand that yeah. had they had yep. they talked about it. Mm-hmm. But I grew up with so many kids, man, and like all they did was they played ball in high school and then after that there was no college for them. They just got hooked yep. on dope, dude. Yep. And they got then that was it. Pretty much. And, I, and I've, talented, seen, I've seen drugs really take away from a lot of stuff. I knew yeah. a drummer, I'm not gonna say names or anything, but he um he was hooked on that bottle so bad he could not show up sober and you know bands would just kick him right and out that becomes a you pattern know? it's like when you want to get fucked up when you're playing music mm-hmm. get fucked you, up after yeah shows, yeah you know? yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> practice yeah, miles I mean, if you want to get fucked up after in my show, old band party, plague I mean, warren i'm sure if they're probably watching this they can go and tell you and they want to kick my ass right now but um yeah i was always like get high and do your stuff after the show i yeah, don't care what yeah. you do as long as it's after the show you know i mean that's when you don't have to worry if you and, play the, and the show. reason we say that it's not because um people um you know moderation is the biggest thing you know yeah. if you want to have a couple beers at practice hell yeah guaranteed mm-hmm. i mean it's almost required in most rock and metal bands right? yep. yeah that's you know? exactly if you want to smoke, smoke, and... smoke a little bit yeah, right yeah. There, that's fine too uh it's just moderation and sadly most people cannot moderate yeah. they don't have that um alcohol is the same way man we uh, had to learn the hard way on that like this there's this one show in particular where yeah. for a while there we just kind of <laughs> let loose <laughs> every we time we play a show super fucked up yeah we got, yeah. and it we ended up really band, bad band everybody confession got right now. Yeah. yeah this, this is band confession. and it was at yeah. the most fucked up venue ever i don't know if you guys have ever heard of it but it's called the auditorium where mm-hmm. is it Asheville, 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 North North Carolina. Carolina. yes yeah, yeah. I've, I've been there before it's, it's awesome. an awesome venue yeah. i yeah, would love to play it again we made ourselves look like assholes. Yeah, because we Cause got, we got drunk up. as hell. Yeah. Everybody in the band. <laughs> I've did. seen that by a lot of bands. Yeah. Too. I mean, we all did, and it was like we had fun, but like Fool everything that could have went wrong mm-hmm. yeah. went wrong, and it was more than likely all of our fault. Yeah. If we didn't do drugs, it would have been better. <laughs> yeah. <So>. More of <laughs> no a <joke>. story. <laughs> yeah. But I, I mean, focus. Shit yeah. happens. We learned from it and became a better band because of it. Definitely. Yeah. And. Yeah. Now we're to the point, like Sometimes you said, you need like that. drink and do the shit after the show. You know yeah. what I mean? Like pretty sure. much, I agree. I mean, we would celebrate after a good show. I mean, I think every every um, you good band it. does. You know, it's yeah. kind of like a treat yeah. yourself. Hey, yeah. you played a good show and celebrate with your fans. I mean, yeah, that is exactly that is one of the best things too. Um, yeah. You know, you go to a show and you see them on stage. It's cool, but when they're out there and they actually get to see you meeting people and they get to meet you. Um, you know, it means a lot to a lot of people, believe it or not. Um, I think a lot of people's embarrassed of it because the whole meeting the celebrity can be an awkward experience. Yeah. You know, you meet somebody that you've looked up to for a long time, like, uh, let's see, mine was James Hetfield, right? I would love to meet him, right? Oh, God. Yeah. It's like, what do you say? What do I ask? Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> what do I do with my hands? Yeah. You know, anything like that. <laughs> <You'd> say, <laughs> Don't even and you know. get that little <laughs> awkward. Um, um, yeah. What is it we call it? My little, hands. Um, <laughs> the fangirl I don't know what to moment. do with these. You get your fangirl moments. So. Uh, and I've had a few of them, but usually just kind of just just think they're just like us, you yeah. know. They're mm-hmm. not super beings. Just they're beer. nothing special. Yeah. They're just regular people yep. that have been in the industry and done a good enough job to where you know what who they are. Exactly. You know? yeah. So, um, what is the worst place you've ever had to practice? 
We Probably practiced in my basement. Yeah, yeah, in his basement. A musty old. I never had basement. to do that. I we had to. We I couldn't stand all the way up with like dirt floor. <laughs> I wasn't a drummer at the stand up. Man. I've been so like, in the basement, oh, but I've never practiced. Playing there. crunched over, like yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. Practicing for our first metalcore show as two yeah. dismay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, my um, my old band was a tool shed outside. We had this like tool shed, and it, <laughs> it, it, lucky enough, it had a door, and it was freezing cold because I think we oh. started practicing in like. December. <laughs> Your guitars are like ice cold. Oh yeah, so, really so, so we had like uh, we had propane heaters here. I'll actually show a picture of it up. Um, we had propane heaters heating this little room. I think we had like two propane heaters and a little like plug up here. And my dr- my drummer <laughs> yeah. was wearing like these toe shoes. I'm not sure if you've seen them. Yeah, uh, yeah They yeah. have a name for them. Birkenstocks. Yeah, uh, no. They got actual <laughs> toes. Dude. Yeah, they're actually like hiking shoes. shoes. Yeah, they're like water shoes or yeah, hiking they got shoes. Literal little toes. Yeah, and he was wearing those to drum with because. <laughs> yeah. And uh, he would like as soon as he would get done with the song, he'd put his feet over by the heater. <laughs> <laughs> they're like ice cold. <laughs> it was like ice cold. We can see your breath out there. And you guys just oh, weren't playing man. hard enough. Uh, yeah, oh yeah, once you get started, it got a little warm with the yeah, two there amps. You go. And, and yeah. um, but we learned, we practiced, I think, and learned our first four songs inside there. And then um, we, once we got our singer, he his mom had a bigger place and we all went oh, up yeah. there to practice. Yeah. And um, it's way better. Yeah. And she, <laughs> and she, uh, she had all kinds of like PA equipment and stuff like that. So, oh, hell yeah. Uh, she helped us out a little bit also with the trailer, the utility trailer. So, yeah, most bands don't realize. Um, they don't think about logistics. Uh, yeah. When you get a show or you're in a band, you have to be able to get your equipment to and from practice. Oh, God. Exactly. And I will go ahead and tell you, leaving your equipment at band practice is not a good idea if you don't know the band well yet. If you're just yeah. getting into oh, a yeah. band, oh, you yeah. just start, do not leave your, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, expensive amp and guitars over there just yeah. to be wrecked, you know? And another, yep. s- another thing I'll say about playing shows is like, learn how to break your gear down and set it back up as fast mm-hmm. as you possibly can. And I'll say the same thing that for singers, like, too. Yeah, sound a lot of singers so don't pissed. understand that, um, you know, your microphone, your equipment, the PA, that is your yeah. hardware. That's your gear. It took and me a while. you need to I'm learn that yeah. and master that. Learn and how to be able to do your own up. mic checks and stuff like that. Yeah. Because, yep. let's face it, you're not having a roadies doing it for you. Yeah. The venue's yeah, yeah, not going to yeah. do it for you on yeah. most venues. It took you know? these guys busting my balls dude yeah. like awesome. we had to get him busting them <laughs> i'm talking busting my balls dude <laughs> yeah for yeah, like probably two weeks and yeah. that's all it took and then from then on out i knew yeah for drummers but it's I also bad. i use i use a vocal pedal and okay like, so, so got you've, got your, you've got you've got i've like got my own little presence. setup so awesome. it took yeah. a while but they busted my balls bad enough to where i figured it yeah, out i've seen people use compressors on live vocals and they have their own gear and it, i mean it just sounds so flawless and then you got some people that just relying on the the uh, i guess the sound guy whoever yeah, the, the sound guy to run it. well we do that PA. too it, it honestly <laughs> depends the venue man like yep, if that if it it's capones you don't even you don't need a, you don't need a vocal pedal like i mean the shout vocal out pedal alan with prince this, yeah sound guy alan prince exactly yep. yeah, shout out alan, alan prince of, he's uh, the shit i uh He's I've filmed awesome quite a few shows over there, and he's always been a really yeah. smart, intelligent guy. Yeah, he he's awesome, stuff, dude. And He'll record your audio, too, if you bring mm-hmm. a flash drive. So. Yep. yep. Every, he uh, will, for Every free. time we film there at Capone's, believe it or not, we get our audio and sync it up from him. Yeah. The quality. Yeah. And it's awesome. He's, he's yeah. amazing. Yeah, I just he's take great. the tracks and mix them he's myself. He's been doing yeah, what he does yeah. for a long yeah, time. Yeah, you can definitely yeah, tell. Yeah. And, but, um, like, I mean, you know, like we were saying, it took me forever yeah, it takes practice. Like, like it was <clears throat> literally them. It's a lot, it's a lot of hard work and... involved in uh, everything. I mean, everything from guitar setups, yeah, pedals, yeah. cables. So you're gonna have faulty cables that you have to troubleshoot. And, yeah, and you don't want um, your cables getting in a big ball of yep. mixture. Speaking you of sound guys, and a lot of people, I used to, I made this mistake a long time ago. Is I used to take my cables and I would wrap them over my arm. Yeah, like this, and I heard that ruins cables. Yeah, yeah. So you've I found kinda, a, I found a proper yeah, way to yeah. wrap them, and you can easily get, you know. A lot more life out of those cables doing that instead of just wrapping them fast. Water hose but, style. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, that's, <laughs> that's what I used to do yet. all the time. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> so, yeah, another thing is uh, drums, drums yeah. on stage. So I didn't used to be a drummer. I used to play bass, and uh, that involved a lot less work. Even though yeah. I had the big ass eight by ten cab to worry about, it's a lot more with drums because it's a lot of different pieces and yeah, stuff he's like got that. Like you have to go off the stage and back on the stage. And Ten individual pieces. He's got like cymbals and stands and then his kit. And right. then I'm also dealing with a laptop and sound yeah, equipment. Yeah, he's running our whole oh, yeah. back 
and, yeah, right. uh, uh, and what do, you, yeah. do you have uh, sound samples for your like your bass drops mm-hmm. or yeah. okay that and you yeah. probably start the song with um if you've got overlays mm-hmm. and um and yeah, it's I've the bane of sound guys for a while. <laughs> yeah. It was the bane of all sound guys to have <laughs> me yeah, for a while. But then I learned how to get, do it a little faster. So. Awesome. You know, I think it's a common trend. You know, every drummer I've ever seen on stage with the laptop over, it's always been a Mac. Is this just like the trend or anything? Nothing. Um, if I had a Mac, I'd probably use it. But uh, yeah. MacBooks are good for they live just sound. Run really good. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, I'm a huge up. fan of Apple products. Yeah, I mean, yeah, definitely. They really run solid and Super for the stage, up. I would highly recommend it. But oh, yeah. mm-hmm. it, I've never seen anything but a MacBook. On yeah, yeah it's, that's, <laughs> that's the kind go-to. Of, it's kind yeah, of funny. Um, for sure. Yeah, I mean, especially with Logic. There's tons of samples you can just oh, run yeah, MIDI yeah. through there and yeah. never have to worry about it failing, crashing. I mean, yeah. they're pretty solid machines for um, musicians for sure. Definitely. So, um, definitely. what? So, what was your very first show like? Very first show you Very ever played. first show. Is Big Mister? That's is, a complicated question. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So I'm sure all three of your first shows were different, but for Big Mister, how was it? Uh, was it Capone's? Right? Yep, it was at no. Capone's. Well, I mean, yep. our, technically, our very first show was the TYD Farewell Show. Oh, yeah, it was. Yeah. It was super. Technical. So we played as Big Mister, but yeah. it wasn't even the same lineup, really. It was really <laughs> Yeah, it was, weird. like, weird. So, so I'd technically, say I guess show, our yeah. first technical show was Capone's. Yeah, yes. in Johnson okay. City, and yeah. it was wild. There were a lot of people. There was there. a lot of people. It was it so was fun. kind of validating and took a weight off our shoulders to oh, yeah. literally that's, to see people great. actually like, still jump it, and yeah. they dug our new band really yep. meant a lot. Cause yeah, it was. That's kind of similar to my first experience. Um, yeah. In 2010, a lot of the local metal bands played at this place called the Fire Escape. Yeah, oh, yeah. Sure. Fire Escape. We've heard. And. Um, We've never witnessed Kat, it. Though. Kathy, she was the owner of there. And it, this was a Christian venue, yeah. but she would allow metal bands to play there on weekends if as long as they didn't have any derogatory content. Gotcha. Yeah, so yeah, explicit yeah. content. And mm-hmm. we actually didn't. Uh, we actually kept our lyrics clean. And uh, so she allowed us to play our first show there. And I think it was uh, Dear Annalise, Moria Dear, oh, Victus. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, so... Um, yeah, I think Elliot Tinch was there too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we awesome. had a really good turnout that night. I think there was close to like eighty people there. I mean, for a first show, and um, yeah, that's always rad. We were kind of the opening band there. We only had four songs, and, yeah. But it was you know just a little warm up band, and uh, I was uh, very satisfied with the show. I mean, that we really kind of seen what we were looking at as yeah. far as the community. But uh, man, those kids dug it. They were, I mean. They weren't even supposed to mosh there, and they started pushing and shoving yeah. and circling, and <laughs> yeah. here they go, and everybody was headbanging, and yeah. everybody was hugging each other, and everybody was like, dude, that was an awesome show, you know? We even had kids, like, wanting us to sign stuff for them, and it was like, yeah. what? this was our first crappy little so four-song four yeah. show, but it was so revealing that people dug our stuff, mm-hmm. and yeah, it really, uh, I'll go ahead and show you pictures. I have pictures of it, actually, on here, and um, you could see... You can see me, my friend Matt, Dylan, Russell, he was the singer, Devin Kelly was the bass player, and my buddy Austin, he was a um, drummer on there, and oh yeah, and my best friends were in the other band, so oh, yeah. so we were kind of like <laughs> yeah. playing for them too, and um, it's awesome. yeah, we really got to step up our game after that, it was like, oh yeah, this is a lot more intense than I ever thought it would be, and so you can't just make some kind of groovy tune, you gotta really, really make it lay it out and there, like, and um, yeah. Yeah, not just really heavy, but it's got a flow. You got to have that yeah, 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 to yeah. it. So, yeah. so how many times have you had the cops called on you for noise ordinance? <laughs> Twice or maybe three times. A couple times. Yeah. So how how did y'all deal with that when that officer comes to the door? One time we One were time we were kids. We were kids and we stupidly decided to sort like of literally play outside. We wanted to play a concert and then so we put our gear outside of the garage. <laughs> yeah, oh, we just played man. outside. <laughs> and oh, the cops man. came. <laughs> so we <called> came <laughs> the cop quick. came and the cop was a dick. Yeah, he was, he a, was dick. a dick. Yeah. Damn, yeah. And then uh, one, they're not very supportive of metal musicians either. No, so man. sometimes they're cool in the shop. They're like that one time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah we, mom was really cool. Uh, cop knocked on our door. We were playing out in um, another shed, another friend's house, and uh, he banged on the door and we opened it up. And there's a cop there, and uh, he comes in there. He goes, "Man, y'all sounded pretty damn good from out here." <laughs> <laughs> it was like, uh, I'm not sure. Um, you sure what you're playing but it sure sounds good but unfortunately it's a little too loud and uh we got a couple neighbors called on you and um yeah he was in he, he told me he was in the metallica and pantera and megadeth and stuff like that so we gave him like cool. one of our demos yeah. that we had and <laughs> it was probably awesome. shitty he probably listened to that shit and threw it away <laughs> <laughs> but you know at the time it was it was pretty awesome yeah 
I mean, so. any neighborhood you're playing in, somebody's going to get pissed yeah. off. It's yeah. It's just a given. <laughs> yeah. So, um, on the topic of getting gigs, all right, you're in a band, you've been playing for a while, you got your songs down, you got three or four songs, or, yeah, I'd say, well, you need at least four songs. At least, at least four. four. Yeah, yeah, four. So, uh, that's what we had was four. So, you got four songs down, how do you get in your first gig? Like, what's the method nowadays? Uh, how did we get that well we had our connections from our old band which was which yeah. really helped out a lot yep and like i said we really didn't have much choice whenever we were make whenever we were starting out as our old band to your dismay and we literally just, going to venues and like asking when you can play makes yeah. a huge impact like or honestly i mean did we utilize we still to this day utilize social media yeah yeah, the, yeah. social media we but can. That yeah. plus That's how you get the majority actually of getting out there and yeah. getting to know the owners mm -hmm. can really like they see you're serious, so they're more apt to let you play. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So that's Always a huge help. hated emailing for gigs. Yeah, yeah. I it hate sucks. It, so, right? yeah, it really worst. sucks. Um, I face keep up with my emails a lot because I'm got a lot of different stuff going on. But uh, back when I was on a band, man, I did not have time to read no emails or go to a computer. Course, yeah. You know, now it's right there on your phone, so it just yeah, pulls we, up. But we started like a press kit that we use when we email. You know. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, I heard it's a really smart. So what's that consist of? It's basically got all of our information with a picture and our video and what kind of gear we and use when we play live. Like yeah. at least one or two songs. It's got our stage yeah. set up on it so venues yeah. know no, if they need to. So what kind of feedback you get on that when you send that to a venue? Press it's kit? basically just kind of the standard for a lot of bigger venues. A lot of smaller venues don't give a shit, but uh yeah. Okay. Cause I, I never had I never had one uh, when we were getting gigs. Yeah, yeah I don't it's know, man, crazy. A lot of places look, they look better upon you if you have an EPK. Yeah, it's yeah. like like you, that's they just can tell it makes you look more professional. Managed. Like, and we didn't understand that at first, but once we utilized it, like it, it in general it does. It makes okay. you look and better. And it gives them band. all the information they need to know. You know what yeah. I mean? Literally, like, like awesome. what he does. So it's basically what your I band's do. resume. And yeah, exactly. yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. So you heard that? Um, yeah, if you're looking at to get another gig, send in a resume for sure. Yeah, I mean, press kit. Uh, for sure. Yeah, press kit. Yeah, is press kit. Now EPK. you said something about MPK. It's an EPK, like EPK. An electronic press kit, like okay. label what what dude does what. Like what everybody what does in the setup. band. Is there like, a certain software you use to make that? Or no, man. You, you, I mean, you, could, use, you could literally something? utilize anything. I think I made our, our you stage can use Microsoft spreadsheet. Word if you yeah, want. you yeah, can use you Word. Could. Or you can just much. use uh, free websites. Cool. I'm, awesome. Honestly, I know for a fact if you uh, sign up for Reverb Nation – that you get yeah, like make you you, you, you no, can I, I used to use Reverb Nation you can a get a ago. free EPK really yeah, yeah literally okay. yeah because uh, yeah before SoundCloud was really going on we we would just be like send them a link to a Reverb yep. Nation and stuff yeah. like that but um that website was very hard to navigate and it is very it, sluggish and dude, slow and very unreliable is. but other than that I thought For the sure. concept of it was really awesome though to have that website it was kind of like um in the film industry they have IMBD mm -hmm. yep. uh, yeah, IMBD yeah, yeah that's exactly what that is you, get, you can business. see as a director or digital cinematographer you can um see what you filmed what you've been on all the stuff that you've done it's basically like your resume on there and it's awesome yeah Reverb Nation is kind of like that too um now I think SoundCloud now is like one of the most dominant places. Dude, SoundCloud's for independent awesome. artists. Yeah, as far as really like cool. yeah. if you're just trying to get your music heard, you can literally just throw a track. SoundCloud on there, is that's all. awesome. Look at all the rappers. But yeah, one thing that I will say about Reverb Nation that like used to they weren't as good for it. Okay. But they recently added the the where you can get, do an EPK for free. Okay. So you get Dude, like one EPK, so that's a, for, yeah. You get an, an EPK account? for free, and oh, wow. that is. So if you're in a band and you want yeah, an EPK, that's, Reverb does that's it for huge. Free. That's a big deal. I mean, oh, like yeah. that doesn't like we normally if you go to and... another site, that's going to cost you. I mean, not a lot. It's going to be like fifteen bucks. But yeah. I mean, but still, getting if you're not trying to pay anything and you just sign up for Reverb Nation, you get a free EPK. That's fucking awesome. You know yeah, what I mean? Awesome. So um, as far as the local music scene, we've discussed earlier that the uh, like country music and bluegrass and stuff is real dominant around these areas. Oh, yeah. uh, also, you get a lot of religious um, prospects that go into it. and Everybody thinks you're satanic and stuff like that. <laughs> and, you know, I've had them protest outside of shows before, and it's always the awkward. You're just kind of like trying to ignore them across the street, but you can't because they got a big <laughs> megaphone and they're yeah, yeah, yelling at you. It's, it's whatever, and they got their man. posters up yeah. and telling you you're going to burn in hell. I mean. You get a lot of that stuff too, but um, you know, I don't really think it's super hard to get local gigs. It's just keeping them up. That's the problem. Um, yeah. You know, you want to be playing as a musician. 
you know, you're in a band, you got your songs down, and you want to be playing as many shows as you can. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, we used to play on the weekends, but then it turned out to where we play a couple days during a week. I would suggest if you're in a band and you have the schedule and availability to play as much as you can. And I don't care. Branch if out everywhere. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What he is saying right now, as like, far as you possibly can. It's one thing to play direction. a venue like, you know, like two, three times or so, like. As a band, I know that I'm speaking for the rest of us. Whenever I say this, we don't like to over, like you know, overstay yeah, our welcome. Because at that point, you just become a bar band. You exactly. Wanna, yeah. We you want to. Spread. That's kind of what we felt like. Exactly, yeah. man. We were playing the same bars. Yeah, and it gets yeah. all the time. That's As a band, like you are better day. off starting somewhere and then from that moment on expanding. Yeah. yeah. And expanding. See, I learned, and I learned that later on um, after that band unsplit that um, you can go to larger cities like Philadelphia or New York. And play a different venue every night exactly. on one street. And yeah. You'll never reach to the other end. Like, yeah. You, you would run yeah. out. Of, you'd run out of venues. I mean, you <laughs> more venues would in New open York, up dude, before like, you would get there. Yeah. It's I mean, insane. It's ridiculous. So <laughs> yeah. really, I mean, think about it. If you, instead of doing a huge tour where you just go state to state every night, it's a different you state could play to a city. Different bar in you New York could go for like to New York years. and play ten shows on one tour in New York City just to get your name down there and stay at one hotel. And then people in New York know you. Yeah, so and then you got your name established York. there. Then you can go over to Philadelphia. Exactly. I mean, and when yeah. you see like the tour dates of all these cities that they're hitting, they're hitting these major cities because they have a giant population. You know, um, you don't really have to be heard of to get a show at a lot of these yeah, places. Yeah. Um, they're just there anyway, and then bam, you you just got stamped on the map. Around here, you really have to do a lot of promotion. Uh, promotion. Yeah. We yeah, uh, so we took flyers and stapled them to yeah. fence poles. We littered the streets with flyers. We put flyers on uh, cars. Cars, yeah. Uh, outside of bars. Um, another thing I seen, um, Life Curse, another band I seen one time is uh, they were handing out their demos, like that CD right you see right behind you over there, Life Curse. They handed that out after one of the uh, metal shows at the Orange Peel. That's awesome. I mean, just stacks. Handing them out as people were coming right out of the metal show, which I think was in flames, maybe. It Mm might have been another band. But all those people went and listened to it. Exactly. We did right there. We popped it right in the car as soon as we got out there, and bam, now we know who they were. And And you followed them on YouTube, followed them on Facebook, and then that's it. Um, That's the grind, dude. Yeah, that's how you got to do it. If you're really busting your ass, man, that's the kind of shit you do. Oh yeah, it was it was really awesome, and just 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 the idea of marketing it that way nowadays is kind of unheard of. Everybody thinks of all the social media places, yeah, and um, you know whether that is a good tool or not a good tool for, um, I guess promotions. A lot of people will argue, but do whatever you can. I, I try yeah. every angle yeah. you possibly can to get your name, get your not really your name, but really get your music heard out there. That's the biggest issue. And um, you also have a thing with bands. They try to promote their stuff way too early before they get anything yeah. quality recorded. Yeah. And that can kill your band. Oh, yeah. Yes, it definitely. Yeah, I've, I've heard many bands. That they turned out really good bands, but I remember the last time I heard them sound like a trash can. Like, yeah, put a microphone in the middle of the music, garage. At least put the money into a good recording. Yep. If you're not going to do that, you're probably not yep. going to get anywhere. Like, If spend... you sound like shit, then people won't listen to you. On a recording, so it, mm-hmm. like go as far to spend the fifteen hundred dollars, you know, that goes into producing a good EP or whatever yeah. you can afford. Yeah, like whatever at you least can do. one song in a good studio. Even yeah, yeah. one song. At least one song in a good studio is better. And and get it than mixed and mastered yeah. by somebody that knows what they knows what they're doing. Like yeah. it goes so far in the long like run. Like a thousand <laughs> levels beyond not doing that. Awesome. So I got time for one more question, and then we're gonna get to an acoustic set that awesome. um, that uh, they have prepared for us tonight. So I can't wait to see that. Uh, what's the name of the acoustic song you're gonna be playing? Uh. Th- by the waves, yeah. yeah. By, By the waves. waves. By yeah. the awesome. waves. Awesome. I can't wait to see that. But we've got one more question first. Uh, the other one is really let's talk about band financing. Uh, yeah. Bands are broke for the most oh, part. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. They work a part time job, so they get a flexible schedule. If they're doing a full time job, they're that means they got bills to pay <laughs> usually. <laughs> um, and really, you know, you're spending all your money on this gear, and you're trying to get your guitars and your pickups right, and your pedals, and maybe your two amp and <coughs> Maybe your drum kit, different symbols, whatever you're getting. And that stuff costs a lot of money. And uh, so how do you get that money to go, go to the band? Let's say like one or two of your members just don't spend any of their money on anything band related. Um, really, how do you guys discuss finances and stuff like that? A, a big thing we do is any money made from shows mm-hmm. saved yeah. does not go to band members. 
any merch sales, CDs go straight to the band. And we also record bands, okay. me and him do, yeah. mm-hmm. and we try to save that. And okay. we sell old gear. We've done it all to get money. <laughs> like, okay. Literally everything. Yeah, and, and, and on top of so that, much like, gear. I mean, he's had a job. He's had a job. Like we, we throw money into it on yeah. top of that. Yeah. Yeah. So, and we always try to you know, split everybody everything. Takes everybody pitching in. It right? does. Split everything. You can yeah. really yeah. try to compile a good foundation of like selling old gear, a little money from a check, saving show money, merch money. Yeah. It can build into a Show good money little... builds better so, than anything. That's how you pay for your studio If you really time. look oh, yeah. at it, oh, like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you're making $100 a show, for instance, and you play five shows. That's $500. That's $500. Yeah. That's yeah. merch. That's albums. I mean, if you're if you're literally buying CDs, I mean, you can you can do that. Awesome. So, so what's I mean, the name of your EP called? It's called Self- the self-titled, self-titled EP. It's just Big Mister. Okay, yep, it's going to be, it's yeah. gonna be when out. When is that being released? It's going to be out July twentieth. And me and him are playing a show in Roanoke, Virginia. Yes, it's like a little acoustic show, but we'll be selling okay. it there, and it'll okay. be. And we'll be, be playing. The, it'll be on all it. platforms: awesome. Google Play, Spotify. Come iTunes. out and hang oh, out yeah. with us. We'll have a blast. I yeah. promise. In the meantime, listen to our single February. It's on Spotify, Google Play, all that stuff. Yeah, iTunes, all those platforms, awesome. as well as YouTube. Yeah, yeah, that was the music video I just showcased. Um, that was pretty damn awesome. And uh, thank so you. So let's get the. I want to hear you guys play. Let's do it. Yeah, thanks let's so do it. much. I man. Appreciate it. Carried away 